So welcome everyone to the Caregiving Wisdom Series. Um, this is where we feature experts who have both personal and professional expertise in caregiving. Um, I'm Deb Kelsey Davis and with me is Kelly Johnson. And we are the co-founders of Nourish for Caregivers and we're also caregivers too. And for those of you who've been with us in the past, you're gonna see a different background here. I'm in the basement of the house I grew up in. Um, I'm caring for my parents. I'm down here for the week and my dad painted those bricks. So anyhow, sideline story. If it looks interesting, those bricks could tell stories themselves. So we know your time is precious. You've given up an hour to spend with us, and we're going to respect that. Um, we hope that you find the spiritual nourishment here tonight, along with the practical and emotional guidance that you receive to be valuable. Um, we know that our speaker has a lot to share. The chat box, if you haven't already, that chat box is where we'd ask you, as we're moving through and listening to Raina speak, that you type your questions in there because what we're going to do is use the second half of our time to go back and take your questions and Raina will answer them. So please, as thoughts come up or questions, put them in your chat. So this evening we're going to bring to you Raina Nisis, but before we do that, we're going to start as we always do with some spiritual nourishment. So while we're getting started, just take a moment and take a deep breath. Let the cool blue of the ocean wash over you. Let the Holy Spirit come down and relax. Loving God, be patient with me. It is my nature to want all the answers, to be able to give directions to solve the problems of today, as well as those that could happen. I awaken with worry and I go to bed with worry. Help me to turn to you with all these thoughts that occupy so much of my mind. And Lord, let me place them in your hands. Give me the courage, Lord, to truly let these things go, to trust you with them. May I begin to see the purpose in what I encounter each day. Shield me from worry. Show me how to get comfortable with using all that you give me today wisely. because I know that you already have tomorrow. Amen. Amen. So Raina, right. we're delighted to have you here with us tonight. <clears throat> Let me introduce you to everyone. So Raina, first and foremost, is a Jesus lover, a farm wife, a grandmother to six and seven, and a dog mom to three. Wow. Uh, Renus is an Associated Certified Coach uh, with the International Coaching Federation and the author of a book called No Regrets, and it's amazing. I've had a little peek preview of it. Um, it's Hope for Navigating a Caregiver's Season and podcast host of Season for Caring. Raina just has so many gifts and talents. You know, and as a coach, what she does is she specializes in working with overwhelmed daughters in a season of caring for their aging parents. Um, offering support, encouragement, and resources that both um, you and your parent are being seen and not forgotten and actually being cared for collected. Raina also volunteers. She, you're a busy person, Raina. <laughs> Raina volunteers with the Alzheimer's Association as a community educator and also serves as the program coordinator for the Catholic Diocese of Wichita's Nourish for Caregivers group, um, a faith-based program designed to meet the practical, emotional, and spiritual needs of family caregivers. Raina, welcome, and we're so happy to have you here with us. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and to be able to share with you guys tonight. Um, I know that as a caregiver, you're, one of the things you definitely feel is that I wish I may, I wish I might have all the time to do everything right. And there's just so many things on your to-do list and I completely relate to that. So I want to share with you um, a few points tonight, but one that's going to be an activity. So I'm going to ask you if you can scurry around, find a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen because we are going to do a hands-on activity. Um, that's one of the best ways for us to 
be able to see how to use this method is to actually do it. So we're going to spend a few minutes and I'm going to make you sit in quiet if you don't get your paper and pencil and get going. So go ahead and grab that right now and have that ready for when we get to that part. So, um, but we're going to talk about a method to help you manage that overwhelming to-do list. So. I wanted to start off with just a fun little meme that I found because I thought it was really hilarious. Um, so the gal's on the phone. Obviously, she's talking to probably just a really wonderful friend who loves her. And she says, me time. Oh, yes. Thanks for reminding me. It's number 52 on my to-do list. I'm a caregiver. You can completely relate to that, can't you? You're always hearing how important your me time is. And being able to juggle everything to find that me time uh, feels pretty impossible a lot of times, but it is important. And you hear us say that all the time. You have to figure out how to take care of yourself. So it definitely belongs on your to-do list and it does not belong in number 52, but that's a whole nother talk. So <laughs> we'll get there another day. Now we're just going to talk about the to-do list tonight. As we're going to be able to hit three things. So the first one here is intentionality. Living true to your core values is one of the ways that will help you best manage your to-do list. The second thing is the surprising method that I'm going to share with you on managing that list. And the third is finding more peace in your caring season because it can be an overwhelming time, but it doesn't have to be. You don't have to stay there in that overwhelm all the time. All right, so let's get started. I want you first of all to stop and think about why is it important? Why are you here tonight? And if we had an opportunity to talk back and forth, I would love to hear what it is you're looking for by being here tonight. But I want you to really think about that, maybe even jot it down at the top of your paper. Why is it important for you to get control of your to-do list? What might it do for you? And when we start with an intention of looking for an answer, we're more likely to find it. So I want you to make sure to think about that. Why is this important to you? Well, let's talk about a little bit of, about where I, I've been where you are. Um, my dad was um, passed away about a little over two years ago and he had Alzheimer's and he had the disease for 14 years. And the last four and a half years of his life, um, our family chose to keep him in his home with caregivers coming to him. Now, I live 220 miles away from my dad, and so I was one of those hands-on caregivers, and I was honored to be able to make that drive, um, the 220 miles to take care of him about three days a week for a little about two and a half years, and then the last two years of his life about every other weekend. So I know how hard it is to juggle it all. I know how hard it is to keep your life going at the same time as you are um, taking care of your loved one. And it's so important to do that, um, to be able to do both, to find a way to keep your life going as well as loving your loved one well. And during this season, um, one of the verses that the Lord just really laid on my heart and, and used to encourage me was, be strong and take heart, all who hope in the Lord. So your hope is in him. And because he is, he is able, you can do this too. So a little bit more about me, uh, Deb mentioned, you know, I am a, a certified coach and I love working with um, clients that are learning how to juggle this, learning how to take care of their loved ones and just really have a heart to want to do it better. And I love being able to um, have a podcast. So I would really love for you to check us out. If you haven't heard the podcast yet, you can find it on all major podcast places. Um, and then at the bottom, I have my three grands that are just a few miles from me and I get to spend time with them every week. Um, little loss in there in the middle, Novi with her messy face, which is the way she is at least once whenever we're eating or playing together. And then there's Owen holding my little Roxy girl. And those of you who, um, come to house calls, you probably recognize Roxy, only she's way bigger than that now, isn't she? <laughs> so um, just wanted to share a little bit more about me. I do live on a farm. That is the farmer I in the middle there and um, love just a quiet life in Kansas. So, And through my years of um, taking care of my dad and trying to walk out this process, as well as working with clients who are trying to figure out how to 
do this well, this caregiving season well, um, I've developed this system. It's, I call it the Take Heart system, and it really is a matter of helping you to find the clarity that you need to be able to get to a point where you can really see what it would look like to be in a place of, um, of being able to successfully do this and looking at those individual things that might be in the way, uh, replacing those old things and, and getting to a point where you can actually enjoy this season. So tonight we're gonna kind of talk about the identi identifying the part. What things are in the way of you actually feeling like you're having a successful caregiving season? So there are a few things I know for sure. And one of those things is I know that anyone can learn to live intentionally. It's not a God given thing. It's something that we have to learn to do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that intentionality and why that's so important. The second thing is that you must not do this caregiving thing alone. It's so hard because we want to just, we are so busy that we oftentimes don't stop and think about how to get the help that we need, but you really must find that help. And the third one is, Ending the overwhelm of life as a caregiver, it really can happen. And oftentimes we feel like it's impossible, but I know that you can live in a place of intentionality and eventually a place of no regret, which is the ultimate goal for me to be able to share with people. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about maybe what's keeping you from living intentionally. When I ask you that question, are you living intentionally? What comes to mind? What it is that might be in the way? What's your barrier? Let me talk a little bit about my season. We started off with all of us have a plate. So for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. This is Jesus talking in Luke and he's talking about being intentional, sitting down and making decisions about what we're doing and, you know, really figuring out how to count the cost. What is, Everything has a cost, whether it be going on vacation. If you spend money on vacation, then you can't put it towards retirement. If you spend money on retirement, then you can't put it towards a new car. There's always a cost involved in the decisions that we make. So sitting down and being intentional about those costs really can make a difference. So let's talk a little bit again about my, uh, our caregiving season. So I have an empty plate. How many of you started caregiving with an empty plate? None of us, right? So we had, a, we had things on our plate when we started. And so those things on our plate were, were good sized things. So I was teaching, I had a high school age um, kiddo at home. I had a household to run on the farm. I do the books for the farm. I had things happening. I had time and room though on my plate to be able to put things that I needed to add and to be able to meet with friends and have lunch or to teach a financial peace class at church or you know, find other things that I could do because there was white space still on my plate. But then you add caregiving. And if you dump caregiving on top of everything else, you have this plate that has no space at all. And if that's how you're living right now where you have no extra room to handle any little thing that pops up, then you're living in overwhelm. You're living in a place where you're not able to truly enjoy probably any area of your life. And the key to being able to handle our plates that have so much to do is knowing that only things on our plate come from our core values. Core values are those things that we know in our heart of hearts that are completely true for us. No two people have exactly the same core values. You might relate to core values at work, that you have core values they have posted and they talk about at work, we do these things. You might even have family core values. Sometimes family core values are, you know, we don't lie, we, we laugh together, we ask forgiveness. Just some of those simple things that really kind of identify you as a group. But as an individual, you have things that are really important to you and they are your core values. And by determining what your core values are, that helps you to live intentionally. And if you are living intentionally, then that will dictate what makes it on your to-do list. So getting your plate back to a place where only those things that are most valuable to you right now in this season is one of the most important things you can do. You know, as I think of that, I actually let my teaching job go. Now I started coach training and did some other things in a career base as well while I was caring for my dad, but it wasn't the same because the ability to teach day in and day out and to give what I needed to with the kids at school, 
as well as give what I needed to my dad was not something I could balance long term. So after about six months, my contract was up and I made a decision. I'm going to let this go. I also had an opportunity during my caregiving season to teach Sunday school at my church. And that's a great thing. I love kids. I want to share about Jesus. Those are things that are important to me. Those are core values. But when I look at where that fit in that season of my life, I had to say, no, not right now. So now that my dad is gone, my life is in a different place, then I volunteer in my church nursery. I take time to do those things that I might not have had the time or emotional energy to do during my caring season. So another way to make room on your plate is then to, to kind of prioritize what core values you have. Because some things might be a core value, they just might not be for this season. So now let's talk about, you're going to be intentional in that. You have to make those intentional choices. And that's really an important part of getting the to-do list under control is letting go of those things that are not important. So let's get to the second thing. So how do we get everything done? First, we weeded out the things that are not important or not important in this season. And we've just made sure those things that are important need to be done. So we're going to take a look at doing a little activity. Like I said, I need you to have some pencil and paper. And we're going to take a look at how to um, use this wonderful um, tool that I found. So let's start, first of all, with, um, I think I have a scripture here. Yes. So Ecclesiastes 3.1, we all have heard this one. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under the sun. And there is timing for everything. And so many times we want everything all the time. And it really doesn't work that way. We have to be in the right timing for the season that we're in. And I love that God encourages us with that and reassures us of the fact that there is a season for everything and there is a time for every matter. So keeping that in mind and prayerfully considering what needs to be on the to-do list and what needs to be a core value for you is a, a really important step as well. So let's take a look at, um, our next one is a quote from David Allen. He's a productivity consultant. He says, you can do anything, but you cannot do everything. Did you hear that? You can do anything. I can do anything. I can set my mind to anything, but I cannot do everything. And I will take that a step farther. God hasn't called me to do everything. So I have to be really intentional in what I choose to do. Now, this process that I'm going to teach you is actually a David Allen process. He um, has an amazing book and it is um, getting things done. And so you can check that out to learn more about it, but I've just kind of summarized this process and we're ready for your paper and pencil. And we're gonna talk about um, doing a brain dump. We're actually gonna spend, I'm gonna set the timer for two and a half minutes. But ideally what you would do is have just a couple of blank pieces of paper and I'll write down every single task that's in your brain. The way God created our brain is we are always trying to solve problems. And if we, have all of these things floating around in our brain, then we can't focus. We are distracted. We are overwhelmed. And so helping us to just dump it all on a piece of paper can make a huge difference. But obviously we don't have time to do that because honestly to dump every single thing out of your brain would take, uh, take a really long time. You don't want to sit here that long. I promise you that. So I want you to look at the categories that I put on the screen and I want you to pick one category dump everything that you have in your brain having to do with that category on your paper. It doesn't have to be organized. It just needs to be written down. And if you get done with that one before I tell you to stop, then I want you to choose a second one. But something that really comes to mind right away, connects with you as soon as you look at it, I want you to spend the two and a half minutes getting at least two of these categories, every single little thing. It doesn't matter. If you have laundry in the washing machine right now, your brain is thinking about, I need to move it to the dryer. Those, ta every single task is taking up space in your brain and it can, it, it causes your brain not to function correctly. So I'm going to be quiet and it's going to feel like a really long time, <laughs> but I'm going to do it for two and a half minutes. And I really want you to write down everything you can think of. So I'm going to be quiet. Go.
have about 30 more seconds. So if you are done with one, make sure you start another one. Okay, so now let's go to the, the next slide and let's take a look at um, if you were, again, if you were doing this yourself, um, we would want you to, you know, finish, go all the way until you dumped everything out of your brain. But tonight, because we are on a little limited time schedule here, we're just going to go on to the next step. And the next step is one of the most important steps because all of us have a to-do list, right? We've all tried. They're in our calendars or different places. There's to-do lists. The key to this process, the reason why it works, is because you have to then go to the next step. Again, our brain is always trying to solve problems. And David Allen calls it a loop. Something that is open and not finished is an open loop in our brain. And if we close that loop, we only have to do one thing to close the loop. We have to know what our next step is and commit to that next step. So when we look at our list, then you have to be able to, when, first of all, I hope you're a little overwhelmed by all the things that are on your list, because I know that there is so much for you to do. But I want you to take a few minutes now and think of the next step you need to take. Now I'm gonna give you an example here of how to um, take this next step without it being something that maybe you have never thought of it in this way. So let's say my sister's birthday is coming up and I know one of the things that's in my mind is I need to send her a birthday card. Well, I'm not sure where I am in this point in the process. All I'm thinking is I need to send a birthday card. I need to send a birthday card. I need to send a birthday card. Well, the next step is, is it mailing the card? Is the next step buying the card? Is the next step looking at the address to put it on the card? Is the next step buying the stamp that I'm missing to mail the card? There's so many next steps that that one to do is actually too vague to set our mind at ease. So we need to write the very next step, just one step. What one step do I need to take? So I need to buy a card. I don't have a birthday card yet for her. So I need to write on my shopping list to buy her a card. And I need to know when I'm going to the store to do that. My brain knows that I have to have a plan and it has to have a specific deadline in order for my brain to really be put at ease that I'm not gonna forget this. So I'm gonna, again, give us about a minute to write your next step for the things that are on your list. But it's not always an easy process. So really just think one step. It doesn't mean I can only do one step. It just means that I'm committing to do one step and then put a deadline. What date am I gonna do that by? So you have one minute. Okay, let's take a deep breath, put our pencils down, and let's take a look at what we've accomplished. Hopefully, you're starting to feel a sense of, okay, I've kind of got this. I know what I'm going to do, and I know when I'm going to do it. And honestly, the more that you practice this, the more often you impl implement this planning, the more peace you're going to find. You have to plan it, and then you need to do it. So what are some things that you discovered? We have the chat here. I want you just to take a couple minutes. What did you discover um, from doing this activity? Anybody share an insight maybe that they didn't realize? It's doable. Thank you, Dolores. Anybody else? Specific, it becomes less vague. 
and you can break the task down into small pieces. Good. The next first step sometimes needs to be made smaller for sure. Again, another one, I actually can do it. Good. It's not as hard. I, again, our mind kind of makes it a big, when it's too big, it just feels like there's no way I can do this. Those small steps really can bring some peace for you. Write it down. Very good, yes. <laughs> no wonder I'm overwhelmed. There's so many categories, so many things. You're right, we wear so many hats and we don't even realize how much there is to do. So yes, thinking of the next step, good, great. That's exciting. Thanks for sharing those with me. Um, you might need a bigger piece of paper and that's okay. Um, but it's really, once you, once you start doing this regularly, you're not going to have to have as many things because you're going to naturally close the loops as you create your things to do. You're going to close the loops. So something, you know, that loop that's open is start, it causes that dissonance and it just causes the unrest. So closing those loops really can help us to bring peace. So we'll, we'll move on. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. So we're going to look at how to get more peace more often, because that is definitely what our goal is. You know, and John, um, again, it, it, it's just telling us, Jesus said to us, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So we know that a life, a a peace-filled life day in and day out is, is just unrealistic. It's not going to happen because we know the world that we live in, there's stress. There's things that are going to cause us to have to um, be stressed out, to be overwhelmed at times. But his goal is for us to take peace in him, to find peace in him, and to know that ultimately he has overcome the world. And to me, this scripture is so such a blessing right now in this time, in this world, because there are so many things going on that are out of our control and um, can make us feel overwhelmed. So really realizing our peace comes from him, that's always the first step. Okay, next one. So falling back to the system that I've developed, just again, kind of talking a little bit about what, what can you do to plan on figuring out how to get past where you are right now. This was just one activity but what I do with my clients is help them walk through these individual tasks and find the things that might be challenging to them. So we can go to the next one. Let's just talk about what we've talked about today. Hopefully that's helped you find more peace is knowing that you have to make sure you don't overload your plate. You have to live to your core values. Um, you need to get all the things that you have to do down on paper. You really do have to do that. And then you know, you need to know what the next step is and have it scheduled, have a deadline. If you just write it down and write the next step, your brain will eventually learn to not trust you if you don't meet your deadlines. So you have to be true with yourself because your brain knows I really can't have peace because she's not gonna do what she says she does. So, and the last one is to know what is most important to you and then live by it. So I hope that as you think about those things that you can realize that there is more peace available. And I want you to think about what's next for you. What's the next step you need to take to find more peace in your caregiving season? And again, um, let's just take a minute here and close our eyes and imagine what it would be like to enjoy this season. Again, I know that's not realistic to say every moment of every day, but when I take a big breath and kind of go into a place of imagining what it was like to take care of my dad, some of my favorite memories of feeling that joy and that um, thankfulness was sitting at the lunch table with him. And I can just see him looking through his baseball book. We used to use um, coffee table books of old 50s and 60s ball players, And he'd be flipping the pages and enjoying his lunch that I had made him. And we would talk about what, you know, who is that and what are they doing there? And just having those conversations, his smile, his laughter, it just brings such joy to me. So I want you to imagine for yourself, what would it look like to be able to enjoy the time that you have with your loved one? So what do you need to get there? What is it the next thing you need? To, I want to share with you again, some resources tonight and some ideas to get you started, but you're really gonna have to, it's in your court now. There's some tools that I've given you and some opportunities I wanna share with you. So the first thing is, you know, our scripture again, Ephesians tells us be very careful then 
how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And I think that comes right back to living to our core values. So I've created a resource that's just a simple one page core value um, exercise. If you've never done that before, I would really recommend um, hop online at my website, a season of caring.com slash values. And just, you do need to share your email address with me, but um, I'll add you to my newsletter list, but you can always unsubscribe at any time. And instantly, as soon as you share that email address, you should be able to download this exercise. So I really love for you to do that because I think that was one of the first steps you can take to really examining what's on your plate and moving you to a place that your to-do list is more doable. Also wanna offer, if you are this person, if you are a person who is ready to, um, who is determined to care well and have a life at the same time, if you're ready to invest in the support that you need to do that, and if you're willing to do things a little different to get some peace, then I would also like to offer you an opportunity for us just to talk and see if maybe working together would be a good fit. So you can just visit um, www.talkwithreina.com. It'll let you schedule a time to just have a conversation and see if something that um, one of the programs that I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching or I have a new group coaching that's just getting ready to start. Um, it's actually our next slide, Deb. The um, Take Heart community. And we're really just going to be getting together a couple times a month uh, it is a paid opportunity to be a part of a community of other caregivers and sharing the journey together and doing some of the things like we did tonight to help you move past any stuck places that you have. So I'd be happy to share more details about that. You can also check it out online. And I just wanted to close with um, one of my favorite scriptures, scriptures again was do everything in love in 1 Corinthians 16, 14. So as we are doing this um, amazing calling of caring for our loved ones, as we're being the hands and feet of Jesus, just remembering that he calls us to do everything in love. So thank you very much. And I hope this has been a, a helpful activity for you tonight. I saw, um, thank you, Raina, it was, it was very helpful. Um, and I think it was neat to see people's responses in the chat, chat too. Um, and we'll use the chat if anyone has any specific questions that they would like to ask Raina, or if you'd like something about the process clarified or anything like that. One person did ask, um, so where do you keep this list and how do you keep track of what you, what you have? Um, that's a great question. So I think it's a, it's a combination of what works best for you. And I did notice some people said electronically works for them. I found I, I kind of do a combination of all of them. So when I'm really overwhelmed and I've let my loops get out of control, a notebook is where they all go. And then from there within my notebook, I'm looking at different things. So things that the deadlines are really close, I put them, like I said, on the shopping list. I need to go right now and write down, I'm gonna get that card this week when I go to the store, which is Thursdays in my world. Um, some things need to go on my calendar to close that loop. So I need to say, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to, like I said, for me, I, you know, I do certain things, I pay bills on certain days, I shop on certain days. So that helps my brain know that these things are coming so I can put that date really easily. But typically a notebook is where you start and then you need to kind of disseminate that information to the places that are going to make sure that they get done. The, the next, kind of the next step. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Serena, a, a question um, I'm just going to raise for me. Um, sure. my, I plan those days, never fails. I'm following, I'm following those things and I, phew, one thing happens and they all get thrown off. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend at that point? So you have to go back and and reconvince yourself you're going to get to it so it, and if it's a small enough step then a lot of times we can still accomplish it you know if it's only change the laundry from from the dryer you know fold the laundry from the dryer and put it in the drawer then i know i'm gonna i can do that i can spend 15 minutes and do that even if my day has gone crazy the key is not trying to put too much on it again it depends on how much white space you have if you have enough white space on your plate then you're going to be able to move things around and get to it but if you're overwhelmed and your day is overbooked, then it's something that you're, again, for your brain, you need to cross out that date and set a new goal. It's okay as long as you keep saying, I'm gonna get there, as long as it's not like a month later. <laughs> again, when your brain realizes you're lying to it, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so you have to be consistent. So it is hard, it's challenging. 
I think one of the things by seeing it all in the paper too helps you realize maybe I'm just being unrealistic. Maybe I really do need to move some of these things off of my plate. Maybe I do need to say I need someone else to do the grocery shopping or I need to do it online instead of going and doing it all myself. You know, I might need to look for some new tools or I might need to look for some new team members to help me with what's there. Because I think when we really do see all the things we might realize that it's, that's, I saw someone say, no wonder I'm so overwhelmed mm -hmm. because there is too much and you have to learn to pare it down in this season. I thought that was an interesting part and you just said it again, um, but you had talked about prioritizing um, for the season. And I think that's just a really important aspect is recognizing that um, the example you gave was teaching. It's not that you're not ever going to be be able to teach again because you have this. And it's sometimes hard for us to see that when we're in the middle of things, but holding on to that idea of I am in this season. Um, and so right now, this is what makes sense is to prioritize this over this for this season. Um, and even and even someone who's, you know, a, a long-term caregiver, if you will, um, there are seasons within, within that still um, that ebb and yep. flow a little bit. Definitely. Um, and I even think of your story, Kelly, in that, you know, in the season where Bobby was first diagnosed and you were doing surgery and you were in all of those things, he, it became all there was. Right. Absolutely. But there's life beyond that and things have changed and you now have more opportunities and you know, you came back into needing to care more again with school, but he's going away again. So it is, I think it is so hard in the middle of the season to remember this is just a season. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost, you feel guilty almost thinking that because that means your loved one won't be here forever, but none of us are going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. And the key is it, it really isn't going to be forever. Right. So, um, cherishing the time right now that helps motivate us to do that but it also helps us to understand that putting something on the shelf doesn't mean it has to be gone forever exactly Lorena, we have a question from susan so is a calendar or schedule an integral part of working through all the tasks and where does the prioritizing come into that part i i think it is and for me it really was and i i said i used all the things so i had um my electronic calendar that, you know, so when I was making appointments and things were changing scheduling wise, I had that right there in my hands. But I, I also found that I needed it on paper. I needed to get into the nitty gritty of the details on paper. So I have a paper calendar I have, and I have an electronic calendar. And on my paper calendar on, on Sunday nights, I go through the week and look at what does my week look like and make sure that any of those deadlines I've set to myself have a time and a day. Again, I have to be flexible because it might not happen, but at least I've intentionally planned it. If I haven't intentionally planned it, it's never going to get done, right? So, um, and I usually try to just set the goal of three things a day, three tasks a day, because everything else takes up so much space. So if I can get these three things done before I go to bed, I've had a good day. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way that I've found for myself that works. Um, and I can, most of my tasks are, again, when you break them into small steps, you can take one step. I can say, I'm not going to bed until I do these three things because they're not huge things. They're just little things that are gonna move me towards getting it done. And prioritizing is important. Sometimes, you know, if I'm worried about the birthday card and it's on the list, it's now done until I go to the store. And then I need to make sure I get it at the store. So that's a priority to get it on the list, but it's not a priority to go buy it right now. That's not logical. But other things like when bills are due, that's a priority. I can't let that drop off of my list. I have to get that done. Another question that we had, and I, and I think it's in the context of, or maybe you need to put it into the context of organizing as you were talking about. Sometimes the person who you are caring for may be a bit demanding and controlling. Um, how can you deal with this situation? I think it's tough and, and it's just going to be tough. I mean, I wish I had a magic wand to tell you you could fix it, but you're not going to change them. But I do think sometimes um, the person you're caring for, you love, and most of the time they love you, right? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes being really honest about that and just saying, you know, I know that you need, that you want me right here with you or you want me to do all of these things for you but I need this. I'm in a place right now where I have to get this done or I'm going to, you know, whatever the consequences of me not being able to do that. 
And I think when I put my need out before the person that I love and I'm caring for, they care and they want me to be able to do that. And sometimes I think we forget to even give them that opportunity to love us. Um, but sometimes they're just difficult. And, and sometimes you're gonna just have to say, I know that you would rather have me here, but right now Sarah is gonna come in and she's gonna take care of you and I'm gonna go take care of my family or I'm gonna go do what needs to be done for me and I'll be back. I love you, I'll see you later. That's a beautiful way to handle it. And you know, I, I see a note out here from Carlin and Carlin, I can totally relate to what you're saying here, which is in caring for mom, I need to learn to be the daughter, not just the business manager. And um, you know, boy, that rings true for I'm sure a lot of you. Rainy, your thoughts? So many hats. It, it, there's so many hats to wear. And I think, again, it's you are the business manager, but a good manager doesn't do it all themselves. A good manager delegates. And so understanding that there are things that you can do and there are things that you can't do, again, leaves room on your plate to be the daughter. And I was blessed in that I was traveling so far to be with my dad that when I was there, I was there. I was there for three days straight and we had help that came in at times and did different things. But I was very intentional with, I am now on the clock and I'm spending time with him. I'm going to see how many smiles I can get, how many laughs I can get. You know, we played ping pong together. We did puzzles together. We spent time, not just managing the environment. He slept really well and he slept for a long time. So that did give me time to myself during those periods of time. He would go to bed 7.30, 8 o'clock and I don't go to bed till really late. And so I had time to do my things then. So I think sometimes it's, again, um, it is important. You have to find that as that's my core value is my dad. Happy and healthy was what I my mantra. I want my dad as happy and healthy as possible. And happy was part of my job too, not just healthy not easy. Part of why I think getting the support that you need to help you talk through these things and understand what options you have and how to look at them from a little different angle can really make such a difference. So Raina, did you ever schedule into your priorities that intentional time? Like this is my sacred time where I'm going to do nothing but be the daughter and have some fun with dad? Oh yeah, definitely. I had definite days and there were on um, Saturdays, especially were times I had a caregiver there um, that came in at seven and was there till 1030. And so I could sleep a little bit and, and get dressed and get ready for my day. But between 1030 until I put into bed, I really made our days. We went to my nephew's basketball games. We went every Saturday to visit his sister and get a hamburger and spend time. So yeah, I, I was in, it was like, this is our schedule. This is my job during those times. So for sure. And always looking for things that brought him joy. So. Beautiful. And again, if anyone has any questions, I would encourage you to um, certainly add them to the chat. Um, in the meantime though, uh, what do you do Raina? Like as you find, you have your list and you find either things that um, just are not seeming to get taken care of, you know, that they're just lingering on and on, um, or things that um, maybe because of the nature of the task, it keeps coming back up into your to-do list, so to speak. I think one of the things that um, is really helpful is, you know, evaluating it. If you keep bumping it, then it's not a priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it is a priority and you're letting it get bumped, then you're not, you know, you're not living by your core values. So you have to really evaluate it if it's, if it's really a priority. So let's talk about exercise. That's a hard thing for all of us, right? None of us, I won't say none of us because some people love it. I, I'm not one that loves it. I love to play sports, but I don't love to exercise, you know, just getting out and doing it. So, so it was something that would get bumped until I decided, no, this is, I'm going to set this goal. I need to find a way to get this done. So for me, it had to look different. Um, when I was teaching, I actually got in a really good routine. Right after I left school, I went straight to the gym and I was able to lift weights and use the elliptical and do those things. Well, I'm not teaching anymore. So mm -hmm. now what am I going to do? 
So I had to try and I had to experiment. I had to find things. So I'm going to just throw out there. Um, oh, I'm going to forget now. Body Groove. Bodygroove.com. And she's really funky. And it's almost, it's just like aerobics only. It's really fun. She's not about like, do this foot, do that. But it's just exercise. I could turn on when my dad went to bed and I could do a Body Groove workout, two or three of them, and get my steps in and get my exercise for that day. And it made it easy. And it was something I was willing to do because it was easy and it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So what that looks like for each person is different, but mm -hmm. you have to keep looking until you find that thing that is easy and, it, and you will do. And so if you're bumping it on your list over and over again, then you really need to think about whether or not you're the right person to be doing it mm -hmm. or whether or not it really is the priority. Well, it's interesting. I feel like in writing it, it, it allows some of the creativity to be able to be found, which is seems very counterintuitive, like a boring to do list all of a sudden allows for creativity, which maybe that's also how our brain loosens things up a little bit. So that's it interesting. Does. Yeah. yeah. Um, Susan asks, um, when you start this process, the list is going to be amazingly huge. Um, how do you start? And do you do one category at a time? You know, do you prioritize your whole list? Where do you begin when you start out with that huge list? So I would definitely do everything out of your brain and with next step. But you're going to have to prioritize when you're going to be able to get to that next step. So one other trick that I want to tell you is it's amazing if you'll set your timer on your phone for 15 minutes and just do nothing but what's right there in front of you for 15 minutes. It is amazing how many next steps you can get crossed off, especially if you're only thinking one step. Now, you might be able to take th some things all the way to the end, but you might be able to do five next steps in 15 minutes. So it's really quick how fast they will go away once you start addressing them. But if you don't do all, get all of it out of your head, you don't free up the space in your head and you don't get the full piece. So when Alan does this, if you read his book, it's mind boggling. He goes into executives offices and will for three days just take everything that they have to do because there's so many projects and so many things that they're juggling. It can take a lot exorbitant amount of time. So that's why I do it in more of a smaller dose. I didn't, you know, but I would recommend that you every night before you go to bed, pick a category and dump it all and try to get through those categories so that you can start to free up some of your brain space. Because right now you have so many open loops. It is just, it's mind boggling when you think mm -hmm. about it. So it is tough. It's not, the process can be overwhelming in the first steps, but also the joy and the excitement when you start rolling it and you start seeing it work, you're gonna, you're gonna be excited about it and it won't feel like it's too big. So it's doable. And, it is doable. And once you start it, you start living in that manner. So you don't end up with all these open loops, you know, these processes. And, and so I've said some of the things already, you know, I shop on a certain day, I pay bills on a certain day. Those things are no longer open loops because that's what I do. So I don't mm -hmm. have to keep dumping that on my list because it's not an open loop. Kathy has a question here. Um, how long is a season and is the total time caring for someone a segment for someone or a segment of time? For instance, I was caring for my in-laws for 13 years. So just kind of trying to get a feeling for that. Sure. And I think that probably partially depends on where you are. Um, you know, I would say your, your whole season of caring was 13 years, but what the season looked like, you know, for me, again, um, my dad was, um, diagnosed for 14 years. So the first eight and a half, I wasn't traveling to see him. I went once a month to see him, but I wasn't in a caregiving role. He didn't need that. Um, once he had cancer and, and went downhill was when we got to a place that we brought people in 24 seven. And I was one of those people. So that season was um, when I was there every single weekend, 52, 50 weeks out of the 52, the first year, then that was a definite season. It was a, a, you know, I drove four hours one way. It was, it took a lot to figure out how to negotiate that and how to make that season look right to fit. Then I started saying, okay, you know, I have grandkids now that have been born in this season and I'm missing birthday parties and I'm missing things that are, I want to do. So can I get coverage once a month? And that's what I started doing saying, okay, for over a year and a half, I went, what about them once a month? And then once we got people, we really appreciated and did a great job with my dad. I said, okay, physically, the job is getting harder. Emotionally, he's getting more difficult to deal with. 
I need more space. I can't do three days in a row week after week. And so I dropped back to every other weekend. But you know, we got to end of life and I was there for five weeks. So that was a different part of my season as well. And everything had to be, you know, adjusted around that again. So I think it helps us to realize again, mentally it's a season, but those seasons just like winter is longer sometimes than mm -hmm. spring, right? Yeah. Sometimes we don't even know we had spring depending on where you live. Um, and summer can be longer. So I think some of those divisions within your season are longer. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth was asking, do you have any recommendations for next steps if they have potential uh, contact with other people, share decisions? So those decisions are probably weighing very heavy on you. And so I would say your next step is, um, one example I can think of is writing down how you feel about the decision that needs to be made, making your own pro and con list. Another decision would be um, making a outline of the conversation you would like to have with the people that need to join in on that conversation so that you have, um, are able to maybe take the emotion out as much as possible of the conversation by having an agenda kind of before you have the conversation. And next step might be that you need to schedule the conversation. So you might need to pick up your phone right now and text the person and say, can we have lunch on Friday and talk? It might be a Zoom lunch, but can we, you know, whatever it looks like for you, you know, can we talk about this? I'm, I'm thinking about it. I, I feel like we need to talk about it. And you actually make that step to, to set the date. So it depends on where you are in the process, how prepared you are for that conversation and how big the dis decision is that you're looking at. Wonderful. Well, I know that we're getting near to the end of our time together. So what I'm going to do is share the screen again. And I see a lot of thank yous coming in. Maybe Kelly, you can comment on that while I'm bringing up our screen here real fast. I think, um, thank you, Raina, because I do think everything was so helpful for everyone. A good mix of um, your beautiful heart and um, the way that you love the Lord, truly. You started out saying you love Jesus, and that certainly comes through, so thank you. And um, also the practical and be able, being able to um, organize everything. And I would like to point out that um, if you liked Raina and um, that, the, that she has the encouragement series that's going on, um, it's not too late to register. And the, it is over the next couple of weeks, different um, speakers are talking about different aspects of caregiving. So please absolutely um, check out her encouragement series, as well as her website, which she had given as well earlier. And then upcoming, um, we have a couple more people lined up to be taking a look at different aspects of caregiving. So I would encourage you to mark your calendar for September 9th is the do's and don'ts of sharing the care and fi family dynamics will be our next uh, speaker coming up. And then if you haven't had a chance to check out uh, The Caregiver Companion, Deb and I's new book that is just out this month, um, it's available at Ave Maria Press as well as on Amazon. So if you get a chance um, as you're journeying through this, Raina gave us a whole bunch of examples of how to be writing things down and The Caregiver mm -hmm. Companion is a journal to help with that too. So if you like that. So lots of thank yous in the, in the chat box, Raina. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Sue. And thank you everyone. We're so happy that you could make it. And wow, Raina, you filled us with so much to think about. <laughs> Go write it all down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down, write it down. <laughs> oh, I know what the next step is though. That's really good. That's so helpful. And it's not as big as we think it might be. Exactly. That's great. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, and um, Elizabeth is asking, would you consider sending out the slides? Actually, the session is recorded. So uh, look in the next day or two. Uh, we'll have the whole edition, you know, all of this out there for you to watch. It'll all be there. It's been recorded. And that'll be on the Nourish for Caregivers website. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for coming. Have a blessed evening tonight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.